Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike from Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Flagstaff V-Lite 30 WFKSS V-Nose Travel Trailer. You guys have picked a really cool unit. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things I want you to take into consideration. First and foremost, your slides. Make sure you leave plenty of room for your slides to come out unhindered. You do have quite a big, deep slide on these sides. Leave room for them to come out. Preferably nothing hanging directly over them. And then think about where your power and water connections are. Power is going to be in between the slides on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And same thing with your water connection. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, you unhook your hitch. Hitch man will go over that with you. And then first thing you do is level your unit. Power tongue jack on here, simply raise or lower the unit. I do recommend getting a stick on slide. Normally your slides will be closed. I just want to have them open for you to show how far to leave room for. But put a sticky level on the back back there and have someone let you know when a unit's level. You also have a docking light. And should you need it, if you don't have power, under this plug right here is a manual override for this jack. You can manually raise or lower this tongue jack. Now once you got your unit level, next thing you can do is stabilize the unit. This does come with power stabilizing jacks on the front and back. If hit extend, and down they'll come. Sometimes one will come down before the other, Sample like down, and then the other one will come down. Now before I run this rest the way down, a couple things I want you to think about. I highly recommend jack pads. Jack pads are gonna better distribute the weight, protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Pick you up a four pack of those from our store. You do have a 10% off coupon to utilize. And then put them down as the pad, as your leveling jacks are coming down. Also, remember, these are stabilizing jacks. You only want to run them down until they're taunt. You don't want to change the levelness of the unit. And sometimes these may be twisted as they're coming down. Watch them as they do. Straighten them out. Run them down just until they're taunt. Once you feel the unit's not moving there, go to the back. And here's where you run your rear ones down. Once you get you in a level and stable, next thing we're gonna do is hook up our power and water. Again, power cord back over here on the side. 30 amp service here, how these new plugs go on. Is it going an angle, push, and then turn, and then lock on with your gray washer. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need it, plugging at home is a 30 to 110 adapter that comes in your convenience pack. Get your power hooked up. Next thing you can do is hook the water up. Over here is your little docking station. Open that up. As you see, this one's your tank flush. Here's your settings. Identical here. First and foremost, water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. 
You want to use this when you're putting fluid into either one of these spots. Hook up your water pressure regulator. Hook up your hose. Set this to city. Now we're going to find your hot water heater before you turn on your hose. Over here in your campsite, just the right of your entry door toward the front of the unit, is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is putting in our rod and closing our drain plug. Put that in nice and tight. Plumber's tape sometimes. Um, put that in nice, with a, nice and tight with a socket. Then you can turn on your hot water heater or turn on your hose. Once your hose has been on for a little while, you're going to come up here to your pressure release valve. You're going to pull on that. It's going to release air, release more air. So eventually you're going to get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here. Once you do, you know your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from indoors. Down here on the bottom, you do see an on and off switch. Now, only turn that on out here if you hooked up to 110. Turn it on here and indoors for electricity but only if you hooked up to 110, otherwise keep that off. Up here, if your hot water heater is not working, come out here and press this bubble in if it's bubbled out. It's a reset button. Either one of them may be bubbled out. Now let's say you're going to go camping and you're not using city water. Let's find your potable water tank. At the rear of your campsite is your potable water. Simply open that up, you can fill that up with a hose. Two ways to tell them when it's full. You do have an overflow valve right here. Or if you go inside and you hold your fresh water tank check to be able to tell how full it is, you'll be able to see when it's full in there. Once this is full, do the same thing with your hot water heater. Burp the air out of the lines. Turn it on the same way indoors. Just remember whenever you're using potable water is when you're gonna wanna use your water pump. Don't use your water pump when hooked up to city water. It's already pressurized. All right, we've got our water and electricity hooked up. Let me walk you around the outside of the unit, show you a few other things. Again, your controls for your stabilizing jacks in the rear. Separate entry doorway. On the outside, you do have a grill that sits on this lip out here, as well as a table. Underneath, your quick connect LP. This is prepped, you can set a TV out here with 110 right there. These holes are for a manual override for your slides. There's the jack handles to do that. Same thing for one on the front. Your outdoor speakers, your awning. I'll show you how far to run that out when I go inside. Again, your hot water heater. Low point drain for draining your waters when leaving the campsite. Unit is prepped for solar, should you hook up a solar panel here. It'll trickle charge your batteries control for your front stabilizing jacks and your unit already does have a stick on bubble on it that I mentioned earlier. These are both of your propane entryways, one on each side. And you do have a regulator in here. Simply point it toward your tank you wish to be using or point it in the middle, have them both open and it automatically changes over. Check your battery post terminals now and then. Bouncing this down the road, they may wiggle loose, keep them nice and tight. Another entryway for the other side of the propane. Access panel to your back of your fridge. Also in this propane here is a battery disconnect, which will come important later when I'm talking about your carbon monoxide detector. On your slides, I just want to mention these are called wipers. You really want them to stay pliable to add to the longevity of life to these. You can actually buy what's called a wiper fluid and apply it to those. You have two tanks on this to drain. You have a galley tank on this side. And up here is your waste tank. You also have an outdoor shower. There's a little docking light. So you can see in here, here's where you, another place to turn on the water pump. Cable satellite hookup. Back storage here. Fresh water drain. That's where you'll drain if you're using a potable water. 
on the back, your spare tire. This is prepped for a Furion backup camera. Should you decide to purchase one from our store, it's one that device that sits on the dash of the tow vehicle, electronically communicates with this device, giving you a backup camera. There's your ladder. Go up and check your seams. Caulk as needed. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. First and foremost, when you come into the unit, make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Coming up the wall here is your control panel. Here's where you turn on your panel power. Going through it, your entry light to turn on, porch lights. Here's where you turn on your water heater if you're hooked up to electricity. There's a floodlight for outside. Here's where you hook up your water heater if you're hooked up to gas. Here's where you turn on your water pump. Tank heater if you're in inclement weather and you think your tanks might be starting to freeze. A step light, an aisle light. You your slide controls. Here's where you extend and retract your awning. One and two. These are lazy boys. Best chairs in the business. A 110 here with the 110 and charging port back here in the living room. Coming to the living room on the wall here is your thermostat. Simply turn it to heat. Fan, as he's kicking on now, or cool. And over here is just a fan, different controls. Set it at the desired temperature. Your television. Blow your TV. Your fireplace. Turn this to on. And then turn it on over here. Even though we can uh, change the colors here and make it dimmer and brighter. The biggest thing on these is the heat. If you crank your heat up to high here. If it's cold, in the mornings or evenings and instead of using your ga gas to warm your unit up go ahead and use their electricity this will warm it up in here quickly you have the trifold sofa bed I'll show you quickly how to set that up just remove the back cushions Stand in the middle, get better leverage. Lift up, open the legs, pull it towards you. Lay down the back cushion. And just say quickly, you have another bed. Reverse the process to put it all back. Dining table, important thing I want to mention on this is make sure you strap your legs in before travel. In your kitchen here, another 110 on the floor. Talk about your Dometic fridge. There's where you turn it on. Hit that to auto. Auto means that when you're plugged in, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it goes to gas. Or you can press the bottom button, have it come up and be just on gas. At the bottom, below your fridge, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Got a little variety in there, 20, 40, a bunch of 15s. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. And to the right of that is your carbon monoxide detector. This is a 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. And the reason I mention that is because if you're not have, plugged in and having anything charging your batteries, and you're going to be gone for the day, and you don't want this to run your battery down, go ahead and Use your battery disconnect up front and keep this from burning your battery down. Your dual sinks with covers. A lot of your lighting in here is one touch. Coming over to your self-explanatory microwave. 
Below that you do have a light and fan. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Electric light, turn that to light, hit the spark. Turn that to light, hit the spark. Now they have the gas off. That's how it starts to go. To the right of that, on the floor next to the stove, GFCI Reset 110. So you know where that's at. You have a hand crank open uh, exhaust here. Your AC unit with quick dump. Your antenna. Rotate. And your smoke alarm. That's all in the ceiling. Coming back into your bathroom. Over here is your lighting on the wall. Do you have another 110 with GFCI reset? Come back into the bedroom slide. Your lighting up here is individual. Separate crank open. This is prepped for another TV. There's the backer for it. There's your cable and 110 hookups. Just something important back here is when you get ready to leave, make sure you close all these drawers. Make sure you tighten down these uh, door straps. Make sure all those are connected well. So when you bring in your slides, nothing is going to hinder them from coming in. You also have straps for your lazy boys. Strap everything in nice and tight. And then bring your slides in. Now they're still cleaning your unit, so I'm going to leave your slides out while I go out and show you how to close the unit up. Normally what you do is just come up here to your control panel. Make sure it's on and hit slide in. Slide in and slide in. One right after the other, bring them in. Make sure nothing's in the way of them. Go through, shut off all your lights in the unit before you bring in your slides. And then head on out. All right, now that we've exited the unit, close, lock, and deadbolt your door. Very important, there's horror stories of people's doors coming up and going down the road. Lift and lock your handle in. Come over here to your hot water heater. You're going to bleed out the lines here. And with a socket, remove your drain plug. Careful, that will be hot water coming out of there. Come down here to your low point drain. Open both of those up and dump all your water out. If you're using fresh water, go around to the other side. And bring up your fresh waters. Come to your stabilizing jacks. Hit retract. Make sure you bring them all the way up. First you'll unhook your grill, unhook your water. Slides will be closed. Unhook your power and head on up to the dump station. And when you get to the dump station, take the stewie toes, comes in a convenience pack, hook it up here to the rear. Once that's hooked up, first one you're going to pull is your black handle. That's going to be the one on your left. When it sounds like that's no longer draining, you're going to come up here to your little docking station, again with your water pressure regulator, hook your hose up, and turn it on and let it run with your black handle open for about five minutes. The guy behind you can wait five minutes while that sprays out nice and gets all that nastiness out of your unit. Unhook your hose. Close your black handle, pull this gray handle. After it sounds like that's empty, that's gonna be your cleaner waters, your showers and sinks. Disconnect it, close this up, come to the front of your unit. Now you can get a V and hook up from this one to that one so you don't have to go back and forth. 
Over the slide, close it for convenience. Come up here, hook this one up, and pull this other gray galley tank. This is gonna be your front sinks from the kitchen. You've got them all connected. Throw that away and head out home. Again, thank you for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.